Hello everyone. In this presentation, I am going to explain in detail about what is a glide path, what's the importance of glide path preparation in doing root canal treatment, and how to create a good glide path so that our root canal treatments are going to be predictable, successful, easy, and we shall do root canal treatment without any procedural errors. We all know that whenever we are going to initiate a root canal treatment, we have to mandatorily take a preoperative radiograph. You can see in this picture that this is how most of the canals will be seen in a preoperative radiograph. It may be complete or incomplete. Occasionally, there may be some spots of calcifications or incomplete uh, canal can be detected in a radiograph. And after that, what's the first step that we have to do after access cavity preparation and locating the root canal orifice is to negotiate the root canal. Once after canal negotiation, it is always a good practice to enlarge the root canal orifice so that the further cleaning, shaping and all the procedures becomes very easy. And also the procedural errors are also minimized. And after establishing and the orifice enlargement, we have to create a glide path. After creating a glide path, we can proceed with the initial canal preparation and a final canal preparation. So in this, in this part of this presentation, I am going to explain about what is a glide path preparation and how are we going to prepare a ideal glide path. So by the way, I am Dr. Benin Palayan and I am a professor and also I am interested in making videos which will be really helpful for dentists and dental students and if you are interested in this type of dental education, kindly consider subscribing to my YouTube channel Smart Dentistry. I will make videos that will be definitely useful for each and every dental clinician and also for dental students. By the way, I have made a course in uh, Udemy under the topic rubber dam in clinical practice. And if you are a beginner starting with rubber dam in your clinical practice, kindly consider subscribing and enrolling for this program. And I will put a link in the description that will be really helpful. And I hope that will be really helpful for all the dentists. So let's start with a preoperative radiograph. This is how a preoperative radiograph will look like. If you are zooming in and if you are looking into that, it will look like a, a regular and a smooth pathway for the root canals. But actually how the root canals will be is it is not going to be quite smooth. It is irregular. Maybe the root canal itself, the shape of the root canal itself is not smooth and it is irregular like a bumpy road or it may be filled with the fibrous tissues. We all know that the, inside the root canal, there will be the blood vessels, there will be the nerves and there are so many structures which are present. Even after the necrosis of the pulp, all these fibrous tissues may be there retained inside, making it difficult for a file to pass. And sometimes there will be some specks of calcifications will be present, which may not be visible in a radiograph. So your imagination of thinking of an empty canal, which is curved, is not true. So whenever there is some bumpy roads or some irregular root canal anatomy is present, which is uh, the case in most of these clinical situations, whenever we are trying to negotiate with a file or whenever we are trying to do cleaning and shaping with a file, what happens is in one of this obstruction, the file may go hit and after that it may not proceed further. Whenever there is some fibrous tissues which are present, these tissues, let's imagine like that, uh, a tube which is filled with grass. What will happen? It, it is a soft tissue, it is a soft material, but still the passage of the file will be hindered by these tissues. So what we have to do is we have to create a glide path. Otherwise, there can be some calcifications and the file that we are using may go and hit on the calcifications, thus 
preventing the pathway for the file to proceed till the apical foramen. So, so all these obstructions are there for the file to go and reach the full length of the root canal system. So in order to make the file to reach and in order to uh, clean and shape without any mistakes and also to facilitate even for the larger files, especially the rotary files to reach till the working length, it is essential to create something called as a glide path. So let's see in this example, uh, we can consider that the root canal is like a steps and with the help of files and slowly we have to start removing the steps and making into a smooth pathway so that the canal can be enlarged further. We have to understand that by creating this smooth pathway, we are not going to enlarge the canal to a greater size. What we are going to create is a smooth pathway. So now you will have some idea. Now we can understand that what is a glide path. So we can say that a glide path is a smooth pathway from the axis cavity that is the coronal orifice till the apical extent. So there is a smooth pathway. It is like a passage which is slippery so that any file can slip in or they can bend, curve and they can follow this smooth pathway till the apical end. So this glide path can be created with the help of a hand file or with the help of a rotary file. Uh, we shall see how to create this pathway and just we can see it's a radiograph and there have to be a pre-treatment assessment we have to make. Whether it's always a confusion whether we have to prepare the glide path with rotary file or with a hand file or both are fine or equal. So I follow this concept. Whenever we can trace a root canal from the orifice till the apical extent, that is the apical foramen, the full length, we can see the pathway for the file, uh, sorry, the pathway for the root canal, then we can create a glide path with the help of a manual system, that is with the help of hand files. And if we cannot we cannot see there may be some disruptions of the canal in the radiograph or it may be too narrow to be seen in a radiograph. In those situations, we can go and prepare with, with the help of a rotary instrument. So I will explain what's the reason why I am recommending in the in few minutes. And yes, so my recommendation whenever there is a patent root canal, which can be visible in a radiograph, we can create a glide path with the help of a 15 size K file. So it's not a straight way. And let's watch a small video and we shall see how we can prepare a, a glide path. So first I am using, before directly we should not jump to a 15 size K file. First we have to take a 10 size K file. And the first step is, we have to negotiate to the full length. So for negotiation, what we are supposed to do is we can use a watch winding motion. Actually, we can say that a manual reciprocating motion in which you can insert a 10 size file and the working length can be fixed. Uh, we can measure from a tentatively, we can measure from a preoperative radiograph and then with the help of a little clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise rotation. And we can engage and we can go till the full length of the root canal. Once we have reached the full length and then slowly we can use the same right side, left side motion. At the same time, we can pull it outside. So first with a clockwise and counterclockwise motion, we are pushing and we are going till the full length and once the full length that is the working length is reached then we can use the same motion and pull it out. So this way the chances for the file separation is minimized or almost nil. Once this is done we can say that now we have negotiated the root canal. So this canal negotiation is not a glide path preparation. So what we are supposed to do is in the second stage, we have to create a glide path. 
for creating a glide path we, we initially we can use a 10 size k file fix the stopper to the tentative working length and push the file maybe in a clockwise counterclockwise rotation go to the full length and pull it from there okay first we have negotiated just we can watch the motion and that's pulling it out that is the taking the file out of the root canal should not be too outside we have to take it maybe three to four millimeter and then we have to go to the working length and this have to be repeated so what we are basically doing is you are uh, pushing the file and you are pulling it in whenever you find some obstructions so the file may not go so whenever the there are some obstructions then we have to use a slight clockwise counterclockwise push motion to till we reach the working length and we can see so what i am doing is i am just pushing the file and i am pulling it out so it's an we can say it as it's an outside and inside motion outside and inside motion once we get a smooth pathway with the help of a 10 size file then we can shift on to a 15 size file in the 15 size file also we can set it uh, the stopper to the tentative working length then in the same way we have to negotiate first uh, negotiate we have already negotiated with the 10 size but a 15 size file may not reach the full length so we can use a watch winding motion again to reach the full length then push it go to the full length then pull it out and remember that pulling it out excessively and pushing it in uh, can cause some procedural errors like it can straighten the canal or it can um, get separated or it can create some blockage or ledges so in order to avoid that keep it short just just uh, pull it out maybe a millimeter or two then push it in maximum we can uh, pull out and push in maybe for three to four millimeter so what's the difference between a negotiation and a glide path preparation glide path with a clockwise and counterclockwise rotation we are going reaching to the full length then we are taking the file out but in case of a glide path preparation a smooth pathway is created and we can say that we have created a glide pathway whenever we are simply pushing the file without any rotation a 15 size k file and if it goes and gets binded at the full length we can see that i am just simply pushing it it goes to the full length at the at the working length it binds at the working length it has to bind if it is not binding we are we can consider that we are violating the root canal apex that should not happen we should maintain the apical foramen as small as possible so just we can create a glide path with the help of a 15 size file so the sequence are first we have to negotiate with a 10 size file then you have to create a smooth glide path by pulling it out and pushing it in of a, a 10 size k file once that is done negotiate again with a 15 size k file again create a smooth pathway so that if you are simply pushing it it goes till the working length binds there and just by pulling it out it will come out so if this pathway is smooth we can say it as we have got a, a glide path okay so that's the best way to create a glide path with the help of a hand files or a, a manual system okay so the other path the other technique for creating a glide path is usage of the rotary files there are so many systems which are available we can say that the path files uh, in path files there are three different types of files of 13 tip size and 2 percentage taper 16 tip size and 2 percentage taper 19 tip size and 2 percentage taper so gradually after after negotiating the root canal with a 10 size file and once a 10 size hand file is smooth then you can use this three files in in a, in a sequence then you can create a glide path and other files are available in a single files for example the pro glider uh, 1g these are all a single files so this single file can be used for creating a glide path and a pro glider has a tip size of 16 and the taper varies somewhere between 
uh, two percentage and six percentage throughout the length of the file and 1g has a tip size of 14 and a taper of three percentage all this make me to wonder that whether it's a marketing strategy to sell more files by the manufacturers or it's really helpful for creating so how i am going to differentiate is whenever you find that a 10 size file could go reach the apex with a great difficulty we have negotiated we have taken some time to negotiate with a 10 size file create a glide path with manual file that is 10 size file then you can use one of this system and and in the second scenario if you can find that a 10 size file is quite loose and even a 15 size file without much efforts like what we have seen in this example if it goes then we can automatically prepare the uh, glide path with the help of a 15 size k file that is a manual glide path preparation so there are only two types we can differentiate that if a 10 size file could reach the apex easily then we can uh, prepare it with a 15 size hand file and we can finish a manual glide path preparation and by way by the ch by any chance with greater difficulty if a 10 size file is going to reach the apex then we can go for a rotary glide path preparation which is superior yes uh, both if if you are preparing in a better way both are equally good both are equally efficient i always prefer to prepare with a hand file because the chances for the procedural errors the separation of the files are, are minimized and if you are too short of the time or if you cannot spend adequate time for a, a manual glide path preparation in those situations you can go for a glide path preparation with the help of a rotary files so once a glide path is prepared then you can go for a canal preparation that is you can divide the canal preparation into the initial canal preparation and final canal preparation so hopefully that is a different topic totally and a different topic not for to be discussed along with a uh, glide path preparation so i hope this uh, clarifies most of the doubts that you are having about glide path and so if there are any other doubts so put a message in the comment session and i will be waiting to answer for all your doubts and questions so thank you for watching till the end so i will come up with some other uh, video so once we have prepared a good glide path our cleaning shaping and alterations are going to be really simple so if we can say that after canal negotiation what is more important is a good glide path preparation will minimize the errors and it will make the work of a dentist easy for doing cleaning shaping and root canal alteration thank you have a nice day